Have you ever seen such a beautiful night? I could almost kiss the stars, they're shining so bright. When I see you smiling, I go, oh, oh, oh. Welcome back to Every Disney Movie Ever. My name is Justin. I'm watching Every Disney Movie Ever. Today, I'm going to talk about the Lizzie McGuire movie. The Lizzie McGuire movie is a 2003 theatrical release. It's directed by Jim Fall, cinematography by Jersey Selinski, editing by Margaret Goodspeed, music by Cliff Edelman, and it's written by Susan Estelle Jansen, Ed Dechter, and John J. Strauss. The film stars Hilary Duff as Lizzie, Slash as Abella, obviously, Adam Lamberg as Gordo, Yanni Gelman as Paolo, Ashley Baralt as Kate, Clayton Snyder as Ethan, Alex Borstein as Miss Ungermeyer, Hallie Todd as mom, Robert Carradine as dad, Jake Thomas as Matt. It was filmed on location in Rome. It has a 40% on Rotten Tomatoes. It had a $17 million budget and made $55.5 million in the box office, which isn't terrible. Consensus was harmless fluff that will satisfy fans. It was supposed to have a sequel and continuing series, like Liz McGuire was supposed to continue, but uh, that was canceled because of creative differences between Duff and Disney. And then again, as many Lizzie McGuire fans know, in 2019, Hilary Duff, Hallie Todd, Robert Carradine, Jake Thomas, all, and Adam Lambert all signed on to do an adult version of Lizzie McGuire TV show for Disney Plus or Hulu, I don't remember. And Minsky returned as the showrunner and then uh, it went on hiatus when Minsky left and was never picked back up. The change in quality from the TV show to this theatrically released movie is borderline hilarious, but also really amazing because they really got to use better camera equipment, better lighting, just better quality everything. So you're able to see such beautiful shots. They also had a ton of coverage which I never noticed before, obviously, because I was just watching it as a fan, but watching this, I was able to see how many different angles and shots they had of each scene, which was kind of crazy. And then <laughs> the amount of shots that it's absolutely a body double of Hilary Duff is incredible. It made me laugh every time. I was like, pretty sure that's not Hilary Duff. Pretty sure that's not Hilary Duff. Pretty sure that's not Hilary Duff. Was hysterical. There were some really quick cut sequences in this, which is, large in part due to the fact that they had the amount of coverage they had. I know I just went into the coverage. That really helps an editor out. It lets an editor move and play in the scene as much as possible. Granted, there are definitely times where you don't need to move a lot in the scene, edit wise, not camera movement wise, but there were so many great moments where they were able to do really fun, fast, quick cuts because they had so much to choose from. The movie is also paced really well, I think. I think it's pretty quick. Uh, everything makes sense. So you are with Lizzie for the ride and it wraps up and I love this movie. Straight bops. First of all, we all know, hey now, hey now, this is what dreams are made of is an iconic cultural reset, okay? It's so good. But the rest of the soundtrack goes hard. I used to listen to this soundtrack religiously. I have it on CD, which means I have it on my iPod. Yes, I still have an iPod, okay? Everybody get off my back. I just had to recently get an iPod Touch and now they're discontinuing iPods, period. So I got that in the nick of time because I don't like having the music on my phone because I use iTunes which is called music. I, don't get me started. Anyway, bops. I used to like, first of all, only a very brief moment do you hear Hallie Duff, Haley Duff? Haley Duff's, I'm the girl in the band. The world looks good from where I stand. If you hear me raise your hand. And Ethan is the one listening to it, which is amazing. <laughs> I can't deal with that. But Como Bella Chala Luna is so and then the actual score, Cliff Eidelman, way to go off. But so many, work, work it girl, give it a twirl, do your thing. On the runway, work, cover model, work it girl. <laughs> like, come on, every song is straight pop, but obviously nothing tops. This is what dreams are made of. 
someone pointed out to me recently before I watched this movie, it was a TikTok, that in the movie, which is what I remember, when she does the dreams, it is not Hilary Duff singing. That entire song in the movie is mixed with like other people singing. It's not Hilary Duff. But on the soundtrack, it is Hilary Duff. And when he pointed it out, I was like, 100%, because I've listened to the song from the soundtrack a lot as well. And never like realized that they did put Hilary Duff like back in doing that. It is Hilary Duff doing it as much as Hilary Duff could do it at the time or whatever. Versus in the movie where it absolutely 100% is not her. And so now I can't unhear the difference. <laughs> Alyssa McGuire creators and writers' ability to do embarrassment and give the audience secondhand embarrassment is truly an art form. If I had fallen down and pulled a curtain down, I would have been mortified. That would have been the end of everything for me. And they've always been really good at that. I think that's where Hilary Duff always shines so deeply, was like being able to portray that embarrassment and just... Multiple lines in this movie made me genuinely laugh. I think Liz McGuire is gen like the show and the movie genuinely funny. I know this movie has Alex Borstein, which was a real get for them. But the one of the lines that, no, the line that made me laugh the absolute most in this movie is, is stupid, but it did. Um, I never got it as a kid, I don't think. I don't think I understood what she was inferring. But the scene where Lizzie Furt's Lizzie and Gordo first meet Paolo, and then Ungermeyer comes out and she's like, McGuire, Gordon, you didn't hear me do a head check? And then she looks at Paolo and Paolo like kind of tries to like say hi or whatever. And then she looks at Lizzie and Gordo and says, put your money in your front pockets. And turns around and goes back in the store. I laughed so hard. I had to pause the movie. Put your money in your front pockets, dude. Like, that was so funny to me. I don't know why it took me out. Probably because I never got it as a kid. So, like, as an adult, I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> she said the butter. Oh, so good. So that took me out. And then another part that took me out was on the plane ride when Mr. McGuire leans to Matt and says, okay, tell me everything you know that I don't. And Matt says, it's only a 14-hour flight, Dad. <laughs> like, also took me out. I thought that was genuinely really funny and both Robert and Jake delivered that so perfectly. Oh, man, that was really funny. But I would say this is considerably well written. I think they do a really good job of like showing how Lizzie, or well telling I suppose because they're the writers, how Lizzie could fall for Paolo. You know, she's vulnerable. She's 14, 15, probably 14 years old. Paolo's 17. Ew. I mean, okay, but ew. And he's trying, you know, to, he, he's pulling one on her and you are with her along for that ride. I remember being young and totally being like, I, I buy it, I see how she's falling for him, so sweet, he's being so wonderful. Whereas as an adult, I'm much more like run away from this man. He is a predator, <laughs> but it's fine. Um, we'll get there eventually. But I think they did a really good job writing and then like having you also like super root for Gordo because I loved Gordo as a kid. I had a massive crush on that Adam Lamberg. I was also obsessed with the fact that his last name was one letter away from being my last name. It was a whole thing and I always rooted for Lizzie and Gordo. So like this movie was my Lizzie and Gordo heart forever. Um, but what I also really thought was well done is some of the side stuff. So like the hotel manager, so funny for no reason. It's amazing. Like the umbrella scene, like why is he struggling? And then at the end when they're bringing out food and he finds the food that like really upsets him <laughs> and he's like, ah, and runs away, hysterical. But then also the Kate and Ethan like side characters storylines are well done too. Like I feel like they really gave Ethan a bit more to do, like deal with, not do, he does a lot in the show, but he was much more of a person in this, I feel like, than he is in the show. In the show, I feel like he's just, like, some dumb kid, where in this one, he's, like, dumb. He's Ethan, and he's, like, you know, he seems shallow or whatever, but then he knows everything that's going on and has just been keeping it secret. Like, that's really cool with Ethan. So I just feel like it was nicely written and well done, which Liz McGuire always was. The relationship between Lizzie and her mom has always been so special to me because I love my mom. And I love seeing like a very realistic mother-daughter relationship where like they genuinely love each other very much, but like they had their classic, you know, 
struggles where the mom might be too overbearing or might be a little embarrassing, but at the end of the day, like her mom always comes through and she knows her mom always comes through. The amount of episodes I could think like the jeans, when she buys her the super cheap jeans that are actually really, really stunning and like Lizzie is shocked by that or the episode where the mom, where her mom chaperones and it takes the blame and turns out to be like a super cool mom. And she's like, yes, my mom though. So in this movie, when they're saying goodbye, when she's going to Rome, I got super emotional. This is the beginning of the movie. And I got super emotional because it was just so genuine. Like where they hug and she's like, mom, it's only two weeks. And her mom is like the one that's kind of emotional. She's like, it's only two weeks. She's only two weeks. And she's like, okay, okay, you know, whatever. And she starts to walk away and like, I've had that, I've had the moment, like I haven't ever said like, mom, it's only two weeks. Like I always try to hug my mom a lot, but I've had the moment where you walk away and it sets in that you're leaving. And you're like, no, 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 okay, wait, I didn't take a good enough hug. So like how she turns around and she's kind of sad. She's leaving her mom and her mom's crying and they run back and they hug each other. I got so emotional. Sorry, I love my mom so much, okay. Um, and then my reaction to seeing <laughs> Yanni Gelman, um, <laughs> was <laughs> so horrible because I had only ever known him for being Paolo in this, but as we all have come to learn, he's in True Confessions and he's an absolutely deplorable person in True Confessions as well. And he's so awful in that movie for such a brief moment. So when he <laughs> appeared on the screen and he's supposed to be this like wonderful, beautiful, Italian, nice, sweet, like, pop star i genuinely was like Bleh, no you were so terrible <laughs> like not terribly acted it was very well acted um in true confessions that i was like mad that he was on my screen <laughs> i've definitely seen this movie more than once hillary duff owned my you know preteen teenage years so I watched a lot of Hilary Duff movies. We're talking Cinderella Story. We're talking The Perfect Man. We're talking freaking Material Girls with her sister. Has anyone seen that movie? I don't think so. <laughs> Lizzie McGuire. We're talking uh, Raise Your Voice, okay? I was a Hillary, well, Raise Your Voice a little less so. That was very much Mariah's movie, but I did like it when I finally did see it. It just often made me sad. So I said I avoided that one. But I watch a Cinderella Story at least once a year. <laughs> It's so good. But this one also is one of those that I kind of sort of frequent. I haven't seen it in a while, especially full from front to back. So this was so fun to do. First and foremost, Gordo and Lizzie forever. I'm obsessed. I love them. I am devastated we didn't get the new series with them as adults because I would have given anything to see Adam Lambert back on my screen, okay? I would have given anything to see how he is as Gordo now, okay? Cause I know he like kind of went off of acting for a while and the fact that he was like, yeah, I'll come back and be Gordo. I was like, oh my God, Adam Lambert's returning. Speaking of, I forgot to say, uh, Lelaine didn't come back as Miranda because she had quit the series to do You Wish. So, which we've already, we just watched. So that's why she left and wasn't in this movie. Briefly, there, you know how it's between the cartoon Lizzie and her brain and then her in real life. The cartoon Lizzie and her brain said, oh, remind me to like thank everyone. And she's holding a list of people to thank. And it says, mom, dad, Gordo, mom. <laughs> like, first of all, love that mom's on there twice. Second of all, nowhere is Matt to be found, <laughs> which made me laugh. Also sad, no Miranda, but Miranda's not in the movie. Um, and then, Gordo getting sent home is actually devastating, but him taking the blame for her is like everything. I can't deal with that. And how Kate and Ethan are both like, yo, he's a real G, I can't believe he did that for you. And then the entire movie, every time Paolo spoke, I was like, oh my God, I can't believe as a child I felt for this, but that made me very much be like, I can totally see how a 14 year old girl would be falling for him because he's treating her like this, which makes him even more garbage and how we just all believed him when he told her to sing with the words and she's like, but you're not singing. And he just said, yeah, but at the show I won't be lip syncing. No, sing for real right now, you big fat loser. Like, I'm just so upset. Like, I don't like to use the word loser. I don't like to be 
whatever, but like, what a loser. Like, that's so awful of him. So I was like screaming at the screen anytime Lizzie was on the screen with Paolo. I was like, get away from him, he's a predator. Preying on this nice little American girl who happens to look like the girl he's mad at. Offended. <laughs> anyway, this movie, such a fun ride. Seriously, f like from beginning to end, it's such a fun movie. I love every piece of it. I love every side character. There's so much fun and heart and great stuff in this. Um, and then obviously, Gordo and Lizzie. <laughs> That's everything we want. And it finally happens at the end. And it's, it's perfect too. It is perfectly them with how awkward they both are, but how much like you can tell that they're like, wait, but we like each other. How she just like, is like Gordo? And he's like, yeah. And she kisses him and then he just goes, thanks. And she says, you're welcome. And then they leave like, oh, it's so perfectly awkward for 14 year olds who like, he's had a crush on her forever. And she like, it's just realizing that like, wait, Gordo's the real MVP and I like him. And it's so good, it's so good. Before I finish up, I just have, I had to give this its own little shining moment. Sing to me, Paolo is iconic. It is the biggest like F you, biggest comeuppance, biggest like we caught you in this lie you piece of poo moment of all time. It is like down in the history books, Sing to me Paolo said with such vitriol, it's just an iconic moment. Like I know I've said iconic a couple times, truly iconic, okay? If I walked up to someone my age and I said, sing to me, Paolo, they would know exactly what I'm talking about because it's just so perfect. It's so amazing. It, uh, that's everything I have for the Lizzie McGuire movie. I adore this movie. If you've never seen it, get your booty on Disney Plus and watch it. I own the DVD, but I still watch it on Disney Plus just to see if there was like, you know, if they changed the, the, the like dub moment I was talking about. My final rating is eight. Wheels of cheese out of 10. Our total movie count is Paradox Hunt and Crack Hunt are still the same. If you want to keep up with movie watching when, follow me on Instagram Twitter, you'll find out what movie watching when. I put up videos every Monday, Friday, and sometimes Wednesday. Join Patreon. Got a tier starting at just $1. Get every video a week early. Tiers above that, daily trivia. Guys, I have literally come up with like 300 trivia questions. Can you please go participate in that on Patreon? Because some of them are absolute straight fire. Some of them are really easy. Some of them are genuinely difficult. So please go over and do that. Tiers above that, bonus content, okay? Monthly podcasts, weekly random facts, my dude. Come on, you're missing out. Monthly postcards for some tiers, freaking Video chat with me once a year on some tiers. Get free merch. Get a coupon code for merch. So many awesome things on Patreon. You need to, what are you doing? Go on. Also buy merch, speaking of. This is a tried and true classic. I wore this because don't be Paolo about it, which we'll get to in a second. <laughs> but until next time, comment, like, and subscribe. I don't want to charge your life. You are, so you do. And don't be Paolo about it. Sing to me, Paolo. Listen, is the Italian accent horrible? No. Is it pretty bad? Kinda.